What's up everyone? My name is Alan, founder and consultant at Burnout Marketing and welcome back to our channel. Today's video is gonna be another Braze tutorial on how to navigate connected content data. So in a previous video, we were left with a daunting amount of data from a connected content call. And connected content can be super useful, but only if you know how to correctly navigate the data to grab the necessary data. So let's dive right in. So to continue where we left off in our last video, let's go to messaging campaigns and then create campaign email. We named our campaign random cat facts and we were an HTML editor, uh, blank template, and then go ahead and edit the email body and copy and paste this connected content script provided in the description right inside our messages. And if you click the preview tab, which is this eyeball on the left here, we will get um, every single data pulled from the Cat Fact Ninjas API endpoint. Also, even though we installed the JSON formatter Chrome extension in our last video, you can see that the data still isn't beautified inside Braze. And that's because Braze uses a slightly different version of JSON that isn't recognized by most JSON formatters. For example, you see all these equal sign, uh, greater than signs that uh, it's supposed to replace the colon in a normal JSON. And that's not, and this is uh, not normal JSON uh, syntax. However, there is one resource that I always use when I'm working with Braze, um, and that is called jsonformatter.curiousconcept.com. The link is provided in the description. So that's what this looks like. And so there are tons of JSON formatters out there, but however, among the many that I've tried and tested, this one from Curious Concept is the only one that can still work with Braze's atypical JSON format. So if you copy and paste the connected content data from Braze and paste it into the Curious Concept formatter, click process. Even though we're still getting all these red highlights for invalid error, uh, we can actually still collapse and expand the different parts of this data. So this is basically the same thing as what we saw in our Chrome extension on the actual API endpoint. So please keep this resource handy if you're unable to view the data in your browser, which might be more, more often than not. Um, but since our endpoint is publicly accessible, we will go back to the URL directly to talk about some data, to talk about the data some more. So before we talk about how to navigate this data in Braze, we need to understand the data that we're working with and talk about some different data types. So if you go ahead and collapse all the different data and all the different main fields, this is what we get. The API endpoint returns a bunch of fields like current page, data, first page URL, and a handful of other fields that aren't exactly necessary for us. What we're most interested in are the random cat facts. Where are they hiding? Well, after just a bit of expanding, you can see that we can quickly find them living under the data field. And one important thing to note is that because we see the square bracket in data, this square bracket right here, uh, we know that this data has a data type of an array. And this makes sense because array is like a list of comma separated items. And in our case, it's a list of random cat facts. And there's actually one more layer to each of these items in the data array. So because we see curly brackets within each array item, so you see over here, um, they have curly brackets in the front and at the end of each fact, we know that each item inside the data array has a data type object. And in fact, the entire data this, that this API endpoint provides is also an object because you can see that the entire data is surrounded by curly br brackets in the front and in the beginning and the end. So there's the parent level object, which is everything we see here, then an array called data inside the parent object, then a bunch of objects inside the data array that contains fact and length. And ultimately it's the fact that is what we want to render in our messages. Those are our long awaited cat facts. And so now that we understand the structure of this data a little bit better, let's step into Braze and use connected content to pull the very first cat fact. By the way, the entire data is also called the payload. So we'll call this entire data payload from now on so we don't get confused with the actual array field that is called the data. 
So the first field that we're actually interested in is called data. And since the entire data, not to be confused with the array data, is an object, we'll use a syntax called dot notation to navigate inside the entire data or what we'll call payload from now on. So to navigate from the payload, which catfax will render the entire payload into the array data, we add dot data after catfax all within the curly brackets. And that tells the connected content to go one level deeper into the data field. So if I do dot data, and then let's go ahead and preview what we have. Okay, a little bit better. You may not actually have noticed that it changed, but it did change and we got a lot less than what we saw before. Uh, we don't see other fields like current page, first page, um, et cetera, which is great, but we still have way too many other characters being returned here. Like we don't want to actually show all these technical syntax in our emails. But now that we're in the data array, what we'll do next is navigate to the first of the 20 items that's being returned in this data array. And with arrays, we use bracket notations and we always start counting from zero in computer science. So the first item of the data array can be pulled by adding a square bracket, zero square bracket at the end of the rendering we have so far. Once again, all within the curly brackets. So it looks like this. And by the way, one quick note here, um, although the curly brackets inside our payload indicate that the data type we're working with is an object, the curly brackets you see here, the two here and the one here, they're actually, uh, they actually have a completely different meaning. So here the curly brackets are simply liquid syntax that's necessary to write liquid tags and liquid render liquid variables. So the curly brackets here don't have anything to do with objects. So we just wanted to clarify that here. So back to the arrays we were talking about, we're attempting to pull the first item of the data array. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, we are getting close down to the last layer of this data navigation. So we can see clearly what the random cat fact is, which is pretty interesting, by the way. Unlike dogs, cats do not have a sweet tooth. Scientists believe this is due to a mutation in a key taste receptor. Um, but we still don't want all the curly brackets, the fact, the equal sign, and the greater than sign, um, and just everything else besides the actual fact itself. And if you remember, each item that was inside the data array, the 20 items that, in, that holds a cat facts, that was actually another object itself. And the biggest clue is that they're surrounded by curly brackets in the beginning and the end. So once again, we use dot notation to extract the field that we want exactly in our case, which is the fact uh, that's what we want. And we don't care too much about the length, although I can totally see a use case for needing the length for example, if you have to keep under a certain character count, then this would be very helpful. So one last time, let's go back to our HTML and let's extract the fact by adding dot fact at the end, once again, within the curly brackets. Um, and if we click preview for hopefully one last time, there we have it, uh, just exactly what we're looking for, the random cat fact rendered perfectly, um, rendering only exactly the part that we were hoping to um, isolate. And of course, if you wanted to render the second cat fact, uh, then what you could do is increase the index from zero to one. And then let's see what that second random cat fact looks like. When a cat chases its prey, it keeps its head level. Dogs and humans bob their heads up and down. Very interesting. And remember, since we start counting from zero in computer science and whenever we're working with arrays, the second item is one, the third item is two, and so on and so forth. Summarize when you're navigating JSON data, most of the times, as long as you understand how to navigate objects in arrays, you should be able to extract the exact data that you're looking for. Of course, there are more complicated data structures you might work with, or you may want to render data in a more complex way, like using for loops, conditionals, and more. But if you have any questions, please share them in the comments. We're happy to help. And if you learned something from this tutorial, please subscribe for more awesome Braze tutorials in the future. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.